You're watching Telecom TV from Mobile World Congress 2019 in Barcelona. What early lessons have we learned from initial 5G deployments? What role will open source play? And what cultural transformations are required to make these networks a success? I'm joined now by executives from two of the leading innovators in the industry to help answer these questions. Um, Andrew and Manesh, thank you both very much for joining us. Maybe I could start by just asking you to introduce yourselves and what role your companies play in the 5G transformation process. Andrew. Sure. Um, my name is Andrew Coward. I'm the CEO of uh, Lumina Networks. We provide uh, open source SDN controllers that go into networks that basically provide a, a level of control over 5G infrastructure, um, as well as the existing and in, in, in incumbent uh, products and vendors that are in that network. Manish. Yeah, I'm Manish Singh, I'm from Tech Mahindra, and we are a global systems integrator. Our role in the ecosystem is really to work with the innovators, the disruptors, bring all the key pieces together, and then craft solutions uh, that can be deployed in the service providers uh, network. And the overarching objective is to really continue to accelerate the network transformation. Let me start, Manish, by asking you, a um, lot of talk about 5G here. Are we at the stage now where 5G is real? Uh, it's getting real. Uh, there have been obviously some very good initial trial results that have started to come in. Uh, service providers across the board are uh, really starting to look at you know how and where they want to start to deploy uh, via infrastructure. Uh, spectrum across some of the geographies uh, has been released in certain geographies. The auctions are still being planned. So, so that, that, that component is in there. I think those pieces are coming together. Last thing I think, uh, in terms of the use cases, I think that's where the big focus now is also shifting to is, it's not just about the technology and the network, how do we monetize it? So, so Andrew, g g getting real, where, where are we at? Well, I mean, all the hype is around the handsets and the radio, but all the hard work is actually going on in the backend infrastructure. And if you think about what's going to pay for 5G, it's about the new services and revenue that will come from the, these things. And that requires that the infrastructure is automated, we get to things like network slicing, uh, and that the, the technology en enables the 5G handsets not just to have faster access, but to be able to do things like low latency services or to get to IoT and all of those things. So the infrastructure itself is the enabler, and that's really the work that's going on in preparation, if you like, for the handsets and the radio to show up. Because without it, 5G just means faster speeds for everybody, and that, that's not very exciting. So what are the new services that we, we might see enabled by, by 5G? Well, I think it's interesting when you see the service providers, the carriers actually talking to their customers, their enterprises about what this means. And for them, they're basically saying, well, each of you, each enterprise, you get your own network against your own characteristics. You want low latency because you've got a connected car service because you're a car manufacturer, well, you get this. You're a gaming company, well, you get this. And so company by company, slice by slice, uh, every enterprise gets their own network essentially. And that's what's very unique and will drive revenue and new revenue for, for the telcos. Yeah, so I, I think the way I look at 5G, and if I, I try to capture it in four simple words, which is it's all going to be about dynamically sliced, differentially priced. And what that really comes down to is how do you create a network where you can slice the network with different characteristics, different capabilities. It could be latency, throughput, it could be connection density, et cetera. Uh, how do you create that? But then also put all the framework around it from an automation, billing, charging, et cetera, where you can price it and monetize the network effectively to what capabilities you are delivering. And I think therein lies the real uh, possibility for you know, what 5G will unleash uh, in the years ahead. So, in order to enable this, outside of the radio access network, what are the underlying technologies that need to be in place? Well, first of all, there's an existing network. We're not ripping that out, so we're taking advantage of it. So, what we're doing is really layering or putting into automation into this environment. Because for a network slice to exist, if it has to be manually provisioned and you know, log on to a router, make a change, and that doesn't work. It doesn't, you know, so it barely works today when it takes two months to provision a new service for an enterprise customer. It sure, surely doesn't work in this 5G world. So the digitization transformation journey that all these, these carriers are on is really critical for this. Uh, and so automation 
therefore, is a, is a requirement for 5G services. So part of this, this transformation journey is, is, is about removing some of the existing silos that the industry has found itself with. Is there a danger that we might actually instate new silos? So I hope not. Uh, I think the, the key here really is uh, building on what Andy said. Uh, one of the things that really has started with 5G is the discussion around virtualization, SDN, NFV, etc. That's stable stakes, that's done. Nobody's talking about bringing new boxes. So that's number one. Virtualization sort of becomes a building block. I uh, completely agree with uh, Andy that you know automation, automation, automation. Rather, you know, from a Tech Mahindra perspective, one of the big things we announced is a NetOps.AI framework which is all about OPEX, how do you optimize it, and then how do you accelerate the time to market for all these slices, et cetera, that have to be brought out. Uh, so, so that's very important. And then last but not the least, in terms of uh, enablement, is edge. I think edge is another key area that's going to play a very key role, especially for low latency services that need to be enabled. Now, uh, underlying a lot of this, this uh, technology ad advances is, is the, the innovation, and innovation's coming to a large extent from communities that are working around open source and collaborating together. Um, what role will open source and an open networking play in the evolution of 5G? Well, I mean, this is about preventing silos, really. Because you think about it, you know, t today the networking world is very much like the compute world was in the early 90s. And you know, back then, and you may remember this, but if you bought an accounting application, you weren't just buying the application, you were buying the server, the hardware, the everything that went with it. And, and that's what networking looks like today. So the job of open source is to do exactly what Linux did to compute, which is to create a common platform off which new applications and services can get built. And so I think the telco market really understands this power that open source brings. And it's really a question of how do we bring that power to bear quickly as we go through this 5G transformation. Yeah, uh, again, I, 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 I can't agree more with Andy. I think open source is going to play a very key role for 5G. It already is today. Whether, and it's, it's, it's coming at every layer, if you look at uh, of the stack, uh, from underlying hypervisors to uh, SDN controllers all the way up into orchestration layer uh, and more. So that's one side in terms of the pieces. Uh, then you have initiatives like uh, uh, CORD from Open Networking Foundation, which is really look, creating new blueprint of what the next central office should look like and more. So I think clearly there's momentum behind open source from a Tech Mahindra perspective. Uh, we're doing a lot of work in ONAP. Uh, we're now starting our work in Open Networking Foundation. But the overarching uh, objective for us is how do we take all this great innovation that's happening in these open source communities and bring them to the service providers and get it deployed in real network? And that as an SI is a big focus for us because it's just not about the technology, it's about really taking that into the networks and creating value for the end customer. Because we see a lot of service providers, or the large ones, getting involved in, in these open source initiatives and really driving that. But you know, there's, there's equally, there's a, there's a lot of CSPs who haven't got the scale to invest in, the time to invest in these, these, these projects. So how, how, how do we ensure that they're not disenfranchised from, from all this? Well, right, so I, mean, I think they, they will be the beneficiaries of the work that's going on with uh, you know, the, the top 10, top 20 service providers who've, who've led and, and, and pushed with this. So what's interesting with you know, certainly for Illumina with open source, with each customer that implements, the, that you get more of a baked solution, more of a, a thing that can be repeated. And so when it does kind of move down to the tier two, tier three providers, then the, the problems have already been solved, the, the products have already been integrated, and the solutions that you're trying to solve has already been solved for and scaled. And, and that's critical for this. Yeah, I, I mean, to be honest with you, I think what you brought up is a very, very important topic, which is, about taking all this innovation and get them into the network and what does that in mean? Which is a lot of cultural transformation that needs to happen in the service provider community. There's also a need of a lot of skill transformation because where we are coming from is a appliance-centric network where a lot of the focus was really on network management, network operations and more. And now we're coming into a world which is more software-centric. And so to really get 
comfortable with the idea of really running a network, operating a network in a software-centric mm -hmm. mode is what becomes important. So things like network DevOps, etc. These are new skills that are very much required uh, uh, to really get all this transformation together. In, in closing, uh, perhaps we can have a, just, just a few words from both of you um, to, to sum up what operators must be aware of or think about when they are working on these, these early 5G deployments. Andrew. Yeah, so I mean, the, 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 the key is you've got, to, you've got to go through a decision process, right? And decision process is, I need open source or I'm going to go down a proprietary path. There's a kind of binary choice that you take. And if you, if you, want, to, if you want to go down a proprietary path, you know that you're basically repeating what you did with 4G and 3G and, and everything before that. So the open source choice isn't really a choice. Um, so once you've taken that path, the simple question is, what do I need to implement with open source first? And the, and the most impactful place to use open source is in the SDN control place. And the reason for that is that it has the most power over controlling individual devices that sit under it, and also enabling both the existing orchestration solution that you have and or open source if you want to push that into play as well. So that's the kind of linchpin of driving open source into these networks. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the, the couple of things just building. I mean, uh, over and above the open sources, when 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 they're looking at their next gen infrastructure, uh, how do you create an infrastructure that can really innovate at the speed of software and scale at the speed of cloud? I think that's very very important uh, to keep those principles in mind. Secondly, how are you going to monetize it? And not all the use cases are clear. And, and as with everything, as with every industry, as with every next generation technology, things are going to evolve. So how do you create an infrastructure that can rapidly and quickly evolve to adapt to those market opportunities and use cases and, 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 and things that are going to come down the road? And I think therein lies, uh, lies the key to success uh, with 5G going forward. I mean, remind us again of those, those, those four words that you, you, you describe all this. Yeah, 5G dynamically sliced, differentially priced. Lovely. Andrew, can you match, can you match I mean, these four words or five words of, of what, what the key, key words are, the key factors that we should be thinking about? Uh, well, well, automation, 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 automation. I mean, that's the four words. Even better. <laughs> Andrew, I mean, thank you both very much indeed. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you.